Welcome to our lecture online. Our sun has been around for almost 5 billion years and we expect the sun to do what it's doing today, shining its light onto the earth and the rest of the solar system for about another 5 billion years. So our sun will last about 10 billion years before it turns into a red giant. Once it turns into a red giant, life on earth will no longer be possible. But during all these years, the sun is actually losing mass. And the sun loses mass in two different ways. The first way, it loses mass in its core due to nuclear fusion. The second way, it loses mass due to the solar wind. So what is that? Well, nuclear fusion occurs when in the core of the sun, under enormous temperature and pressure, hydrogen is being turned into helium. That's called nuclear fusion. You take a smaller atom and squeeze it together very violently at very high temperatures and speeds into a heavier element. By doing so, a small amount of mass is lost. About 0.3% of the mass that hydrogen had, the four hydrogen had, is lost when, hydrogen, when helium is generated in that nuclear fusion process. And the equation e equals mc squared then relays the amount of energy generated to the amount of mass that had to be converted into that energy because essentially that's what nuclear fusion does. It takes mass and converts it into energy. When we solve that for mass, we then see that with the energy generated divided by the speed of light squared tells you how much mass is lost. The sun produces about 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts, that's that many joules per second, that's an enormous amount of energy every second, and if we divide it by the speed of light squared, we end up with 4.2 billion kilograms. Every single second, the sun converts 4.2 billion kilograms from matter into energy, and that's where all that energy comes from that we get from the sun every single second. That's about 9.3 billion pounds worth of material. At the same time, the sun also pushes out, in a little bit more gentle fashion, small particles, positively charged particles, negatively charged particles, typically protons and electrons, but some other ions as well, and pushes them away from the Earth at thousands of miles per second. That's very fast. And the gravitational pull of the sun is not sufficient to stop them and bring them back. They just stream into the, into the solar system and collide with all the various planets, including the Earth. And if it wasn't for the magnetic field of the Earth, we would be in a lot of trouble because those particles would be slamming into the surface, potentially destroying all life on Earth. But because the magnetic field around the Earth, we're protected like a shield in space around the Earth that prevents us from being slaughtered, essentially, by those particles. But how many particles are being sent out every second? Almost the same amount of mass that was converted to energy in the nuclear fusion process, about 3.8 billion kilograms every second. That's about 8.4 billion pounds. Together, 4.2 billion plus 3.8 billion gives you about 8 billion kilograms of matter that the sun loses every single second. And the sun has been doing that for almost 5 billion years and expect to do it for another 5 billion. So the question may be, does the sun have enough mass to make that happen? Well, let's see. 8 billion kilograms per second turns out to be 250,000 trillion kilograms in a single year. And if you then multiply that times 5 billion years, or actually 10 billion years, because we want the sun to last for 10 billion years, that's 2.5 times 10 to the 27 kilograms in the time span of 10 billion years. That's a whole lot more than the mass of the Earth. Hmm, come to think of it, 10 to the 24, 26, 27, 28, that's like 500 times the mass of the Earth. 500 Earths worth of mass being sent out by the sun, the solar wind, and being converted from matter to energy in the nuclear fusion process. But it turns out, since the sun is about 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms in mass, this only makes up a little over one-tenth of one percent of the total solar mass, and so therefore we don't need to worry about it. The sun has plenty of mass, plenty of matter, to make this process happen for 10 billion years. It's a lot of mass, but to the sun being that big, it's really not that much of a chunk of the sun.